Welcome to I Finally Get It. Joining us this week is Charles Edwards with Advanced Telehealth and One Telemed. In studio with us, as always, Dustin Webb, our producer. I'm your host, Jeff Martin. Let's get it. What I finally get is understanding the power of the mind and understanding that we are, res- we are a direct reflection of the thoughts we think. And if we can learn to master the thoughts we think, we can live an unlimited life where we can accomplish everything that we want. And I think that's the journey I've been on for the last two years now yeah. um, and learning to discover myself because I think the one thing I, I feel like every entrepreneur has at some point is fear and wondering how you're going to make it. Is this going to work? But understanding how to get past those. You said two years. Can you tell me about that two year mark when you've been pushing? Is it when you started the company? Oh, no. The, the company has been around for 10 years now. It's two years. I think it was my personal journey, um, just really going through some tough times personally and find myself wanting to quit um, because life happens and was just struggling to regain myself. I felt like for that time frame, I was helping a lot of people, but wearing a mask because myself, I was hurting. Huge, huge. One of the things through this show, we've we figured out like trends, you know, that that most of these business owners have had one thing or the other. The number one thing has been authenticity. And we find that we have to put on a mask for this group and then put on a different mask for this group. So talk to me about that. It was a tough time for me. Um, I had just recently gone through a divorce um, and it was really tough. Because all my life, I just knew it was marriage, being a husband and a business owner, being a father. And so when that world got disrupted, um, that part of my life got disrupted. My whole sense of being got disrupted. And it was like, how do I make it past this emotion? How do I make it past the hurt, the frustration, make it through those times? Uh, And not putting any blame on anybody else, but looking at myself internally. Um, What could I have done better? How can I become a better version of myself? And and struggling with that, trying to find that part and that answer. And so that's when I just realized there was more to life, but I was holding myself back because I was staying in a place where I was being hostile hostage to the memories of my past. And so it's how do you get into a different state? We are creators of our own life. We are creators of our life. And so how do I live in a creative state so I can change the trajectory of my life and get to a happier place where I'm living in a place of peace while serving others and not allowing what I'm doing or how much people I'm helping validate me, but learn to validate myself as a person in business, as a, a just a man in general again. And so that was that was really the journey. Yeah. yeah. So part of it was changing who you identify as, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So how'd you get, how'd you get through? You mind, it may be personal, but how'd you get through it? Cause others need to hear it. I believe in God. Mm-hmm. I'm also a pastor too. No, <laughs> so, I didn't know that. Yeah. And so, um, the raw truth, I was woke up one morning, I was just in a really dark place and I just prayed and I said, God, how do I get out of this place? And, uh, that was one scripture that came to my mind. It came to me is as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so when I start to realize that if I can change the way I think, in my heart, which is my mind, my soul, then I can become somebody different. And so I started that journey of learning how to manage my emotions, how to get out of that dark place and choose choose to be happy, choose to be in peace, right? And understanding that we can rewire our minds. And so I started the journey of rewiring our minds. I read a a book that really changed my life. Um, It was called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And uh, when I read that book, I realized that how I was thinking about life and myself was wrong all these years. Oh my goodness. And it was like, how do, where did I, where did I start? And, and then through that book, I realized uh, that I was gonna be on a journey to live a better life and to, to make my yesterdays always jealous of my today. And so I lived that space. Okay, as, that was our first light bulb. <laughs> Make our yesterdays jealous of today. Yeah, like I I deliberately focus on becoming a better version of myself every day. Every day. And yep. one of the key things was through meditation. So now I've learned the importance of meditation and and, and see how meditation can change and rewire your life and rewire your brain and the way you think about yourself. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. So let's go, let's go back a little bit farther. Okay. How'd you get started in business? I mean, what, what drew you to 
becoming an entrepreneur? Um, I was 14. My brother had graduated from college. He was offered a job working at a, a plant. And him and my dad got into an argument because my brother declined the job. And he says, why don't you go work for this job making $90,000 a year? My brother looked at him and says, because I'm worth more than $90,000 a year. And so my dad said, what are you going to do then? He says, I want to start my own business. Well, my brother's my biggest role model. So everything he did, I wanted to do, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, start my own business. And that was the, that was the comment that sparked a, fly, a fire inside of me that I knew that I was going to always be my own boss. Yeah. And yeah. so started the journey at 14, uh, cutting neighbor's yards and washing cars on the weekend. And that kind of started my path to, to uh, business. And not having any educational background in business or anything, I just started learning and reading and just finding people to give me direction of how to be a good business person. So who all did you seek out as mentors when you were just coming up? Um, there was some there was one gentleman who's a really good friend of mine, Donnie Wallace. OK, um, he's local. Donnie does some amazing things, but he was one of the people in my life that. I watched from afar and even had a part in my life. And he probably doesn't even know that, but I, I tell him, but now he thinks I'm big in his life, but he's like, dude, you're always big in my life. <laughs> oh, that's huge. <laughs> he was one of the people that I saw doing business and doing big things. And it really motivated me to be, um, to, to really strive towards business. So locally, that was probably the first person that I could say outside of my family, outside of my brother, was a person that really inspired, that was doing business on a big level. Um, that I could respect and, and strive towards. So how did you get to advanced telehealth? Ooh, that's the, that's the good question. That's the good <laughs> question. Um, that's the intimate question. So the journey to, to mental health started um, when I too went through a very tragic experience. So it, so 18, right after high school, and even doing right before I was graduating from high school, I was trying to figure out what my next chapter was going to look like and didn't know like most 18 year olds. But I kept hearing this voice telling me there was something great inside of me and I was going to help a lot of people. And I didn't understand it. Um, I was going off to DeVry Institute, but right before I left my world, got flipped upside down. I ended up getting in a, 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 ba a basketball accident and uh, ended up in the hospital um, where I ultimately um, met God. And so doctors pretty much gave up on me and said I wouldn't go live 24 hours. If I did, I would never eat, breathe, or talk on my own. Um, and one day I was in that hospital and I heard my name, the same voice, and I opened my eyes and it was a tunnel of light above my head. And I took it and then God took me with him and he gave me a choice to stay with him or come back and do a work. And so I was like, what do you want me to do? He says, I want you to go back and do a work. You know, I promise I'll use you to do things that are bigger than your own natural ability. So I made the commitment to come back. And when I came back, it was interesting because the world was different. The world was just different. There was so peaceful. Um, here is so much chaos. People arguing over color, over money, over this, over that. And it's like, I can't we just love each other. That's what I felt when I was there. And I was like, the love that I felt there versus the love I feel here is different. And so it caused me to go through a really great depression state. I attempted suicide three times. <laughs> um, I put a gun to my head that wouldn't go off. Um, I tried to cut myself with razors that I wouldn't cut. I tried to overdose in my um, dilantin. I couldn't swallow it because the dilantin was making me hallucinate. I was like seeing things, hearing things. And everybody was thinking I was crazy. <clears throat> and so, again, I prayed. And this guy would say, trust me, flush the dilantin down your to the toilet. And when I flushed it down the toilet, all the hallucinations that I had stopped. The voices stopped. The uh, visual hallucinations stopped. And... The depression was gone. Now he says, go help a lot of people. And I realized then that I was supposed to be in the mental health side because that's the people God was telling me I needed to help. And uh, and so I went to work for a company. Funny thing, I went to work for a company. My first job out of high school uh, for a mental health company required me to have a master's degree. And I interviewed for the position and he never asked me for my <laughs> master's. <laughs> oh my right? goodness. And so uh, about Two months into it, 
they uh, find out, they asked me, say, where's, we didn't get a copy of the degree. I was like, I don't have one. And so they were going to, they fired me. But when I went to tell the clients that I was leaving, all of them said, I'm not coming back to group unless Charles is here. So they hired someone with a master's to sign up on all my paperwork. And so then I stayed. No kidding. Yeah. And I stayed in it. I stayed with that company and then kind of uh, grew with other companies. But every job I've had after it all required me to have a master's, but no one ever asked. And so the last position I had, I was a regional administrator for a behavioral health company. I kept seeing patients come in and out of my hospital. And I was like, ah, I feel like it's a better way to serve people. And so I was driving back from the um, from my hospital in Jennings and I got a call from the sheriff department to do assessment on a patient. They wanted to do go to a hospital in Atlanta. They did the assessment over Skype. And they were like, is this legal? They're like, this is telemedicine. I was like, tell her what? Tell her who? Yeah. And um, and at that point, light bulb went off like that. Light bulb <laughs> that just went off. Like, and I was like, so you mean I can do the same thing over a screen as far as as far as a person? They're like, yeah. So I found out Louisiana was a telemedicine state, but nobody was doing it. And so that's uh, outstanding. Yeah. So this was twenty. 2012, 2013, I started the company, but I, so I developed telemedicine for the company that I was working with and they decided to pull a plug on me after working with it for about six months because I realized they think, they, they realized it was going to affect their bottom line because we were mm -hmm. a behavioral system that wanted people in our system, not try to keep people out of our system. And so when they, they can't, they stopped the project, I fell in love with it and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this on my own. And so I took a leap of faith with no money in the bank. Uh, no savings, no nothing, and said, I'm going to do this on my own. And let's just say miraculously, I was able to uh, get the money to start the company. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> and uh, and that's kind of how I started. And it's been a journey since. So, um, yeah, so we were the first to really push telemedicine in Louisiana. Um, so I wrote, I wrote a lot of the laws and regulations, co-authored them with some of the legislation. And so we were started and everybody's like, man, this is going to never work. People never want to see a doctor over a screen. So I used to be the laughing stock of like the barbershop everywhere I went when I tell people what I want to do. Then this thing called COVID hit, right? Yep. And everybody yep. was like, guess how we got to see the doctor now? Yep. And they're like, oh, so you wasn't crazy. So yeah. <laughs> no, you're ahead of your time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah, so incredible. That's so your patient base is, is like, is it psychiatric, social work, or uh, what, so what do you? We have, we have psychiatrists, psychiatric nurse practitioners, and counseling. So we're able to do the medication management side, psych evaluations, and the counseling side. So we are primarily contracted through the Medicaid MCO. So 99% mm -hmm. of the patients that we see are on Medicaid. We see all, yep. all yep. Uh, insurances. My goal was to build an organization that helped underserved. Nationally and even locally for Medicaid, the wait times are over 120 days for someone getting help. And we build a system that can do it within 72 hours. Yeah. And so it's yeah. just bringing hope to communities that were more so overlooked. And yeah, that's and, kind of been. You're talking to people who may not even talk to people right? on a regular basis. Right. God bless you, man. That, that's you. huge. Yeah. So how do, well, let, let's say they don't have a computer or a iPad or whatever you use for mm -hmm. for the telehealth. How, how do you get that in, in their house? Well, we have a couple of programs that we have. We have where they can go to a facility if they can get Medicaid transportation and sit in front of one of the kiosks we have at a local office. Uh, okay. City. Okay. Other than that, we have a program that they, uh, they can get an iPad, which I think it's on the verge of canceling, but they could get an <laughs> iPad for $11 just through a state federal program. Oh, my goodness. And they would get an iPad. Well, it was a, a notebook tablet from yeah, yeah, Android, yeah. Yeah, sure. but it came with Wi-Fi for five years, and they just pay one time eleven dollar fee, and so they can have that's, that. That's and amazing. So that's another question, another concern that I had um, uh, specifically about this population, which led me to another aspect of the business, um, which is my advanced vitals company. And so through that company, um, in partnership with the with the UL and ULL engineering department. Um, I invented a wearable telemedicine device. So you wear it similar to a watch. It does all your vitals, and then you can see the doctor directly from the device. So, like on, on video, you can yes. look at the person. Yes. So we're well, the, are you talking about next generation? Yeah. I mean, that um, 
that particular device is special because we built AI behind it. So we can actually, with the sensors all working together, we can do social determinants of health so we can see where a person lives, how they live, how it affects them mentally, emotionally, physically. We'll be able to predict panic attacks about 37 and a half minutes before they happen, strokes, heart attacks up to 72 hours before they Unbelievable. happen. Unbelievable. And then see the doctor directly from your wrist. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah, it's fun. We've been working on So we finished prototype. We're in final design now. It's going to be FDA-approved device so insurance companies would actually pay for the individuals to wear it so it wouldn't be a cost to the patients. That is amazing. Boy, you are a Lafayette treasure. Uh, thank you. I appreciate I mean, that, it. That, that's a big deal. That, and that obviously is going to affect people globally. Yeah, it's fun. I've been able to share the vision and the idea with lots of people across the country and the world speaking at conferences. And so we're looking forward to um, getting that out in the market sometime about next year, this time. Good for you, boy. Yeah. I'm going to follow you. <laughs> and then we're going to have to get you back on Absolutely. once that comes out. Absolutely. My whole goal is to build the manufacturing or at least the um, assembly here because um, everything I want to do is create jobs for local communities. Yeah. This yeah, is a great huge. place to live. But people leave, leave because there's not many opportunities on the level that they need. So I'm like, I'm fortunate, I'm blessed and honored to be able to do the things I do so we can also make a difference, but try to support our local community and create more jobs as well. Yeah, that's huge. I first heard your name through our very first guest and one of my best friends, Scotty Baudouin. Awesome, awesome. I love Scotty. He's the best. He is. And um, he told me that he went and did one of your services and I I wanted to hear more and I'd heard about it on another podcast. Um, And is it? Brain tap? Brain tap, yeah. Brain tap, yeah. Our, our meditation clinic. So when I go back to when I was having that dark time and I started meditating on my own, um, I ended up going to Houston to visit my daughter. I think she was in Houston. I was in Houston just for a business meeting, actually. I went to get a massage uh, in those flotation tanks uh, that you just lay in this Epsom, Epsom salt. And when I came out, there was this device on the table and it was called brain tap and I asked the lady I said what is this and she says it helps reduce uh, stress and anxiety and I was like it helps us see and talk about everything it does mm-hmm. and I said well, let me try it and so I put it on it was an eight minute session and then within four minutes into it the uh, the gentleman doing the, um, the meditation said imagine me holding a lemon in my hand imagine myself cutting a piece of the lemon imagine myself giving you a bite of the lemon Imagine yourself biting into the lemon. He says, like, 98% of you, your mouth will water and you would taste like lemon. And it did exactly that. And I was like, whoa, hold on. In four minutes, I just imagined myself eating a lemon that's not really in my hand. I said, this is something. I said, so if I can convince myself in four minutes that I had a lemon and I had a lemon taste in my mouth, what if I had this advice telling me that I'm great? that I'm have peace, that I have joy, that I'm this person, I'm that, and not anything from my past. And so are tied to the emotions of my past. And so I, I end up buying it. <laughs> and within uh, within two weeks, my life begins to evolve. So you were at first just using it for, for yourself? For through, myself. With meditation? And, yeah, it was. It became my meditation. You got it. Because... I was I would do a meditation for 45, 50 minutes and I would not get into a, a high gamma alpha ray. I wouldn't. And so when I use this, I can feel myself getting into a different level of existence that I couldn't do on my own. So I ended up buying it, like I said, for, for two weeks. And then after that, I woke up one day and I just didn't recognize myself. I woke up feeling invincible. Wow. And I was like, I can do anything I believe I can do. And I literally felt it and it became my truth. Our body is a responder of what our subconscious mind creates as a reality, right? And so I convinced my subconscious mind to the point where I was feeling this way to where my body automatically has to respond to it. And it became my truth. Yeah. And so, and it's through power repetition. And so when you understand those principles and you understand the power, what, what can happen when you understand meditation and you practice in meditation and that's the secret. And so, yeah, so I, I started doing it my daughter called me one day. She was in Hammond. She asked me, "Dad, can I come back home for a couple of weeks? Because I want to read. I want to. I want to read. I want to redefine my life." I said, "Sure, come on." She came home. I introduced her to the Brain Tap. Within three weeks, 
She did a whole 180. Wow. I also graduated from the Napoleon Hill class. So we were yeah. writing your goals and repeating them 17 times a day. I do that all the time. So I was trying to get her on that same page. And I've been talking about it for years, years. Do it, do it, do it. She wouldn't do it. I also had some books I wanted her to read and she wasn't reading them. After the three weeks on Brain Tap, we were walking in Gerard Park and she says, Dad, I wrote down the 300 things I believe in God for in my life and I'm repeating them in the morning and night. Oh my goodness. Tears start rolling down my eyes. I was like, you doing what? And then the next day I walk into a room and she's reading the book, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. I was like, oh my God. The next day I started writing, her, I saw her writing her gratitude journal. Yeah. I was like, she's a different person. <laughs> yeah. So then I brought it to my office and I asked my staff to try it out. I said, why don't y'all try this? And one of my staff members had forgot to take her anxiety pill and she ended up taking, doing the uh, meditation. And she says, I feel calmer on this than I do my own medication, on my medication, on my medication. Isn't that good? Right. And so um, an hour later, she screams out my name, Mr. Charles, I'm getting calmer. I was like, what? <laughs> so then I realized, you know what? I don't create a space for people to come and just check out a life and check into themselves. And that's exactly what that, 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 that device does. And that's exactly what that created that uh, meditation room does for us all. That's incredible. Yeah. That, that's amazing. I literally, I'm always, I'm a big believer in miracles, signs and wonders. And I literally watch people walk out one way and come out a different way every yeah, day. Yeah. And so it's like watching miracles right in front of my eyes. That's the second time you've used the word miracle. You, you said you miraculously got the funding for your first business. Do you do you mind sharing how that miracle took place? When I got the vision, I was married at the time, and I told her, I told my wife then, I said, "Listen, I have this idea." She says, "Well, we're not going to step out unless you have a sign from God that is supposed to happen." I was sitting at the coffee house on the corner of ambassador Catherine and congress mm -hmm. a gentleman walks in and my phone was ringing it was 225 number kept showing i kept sending the voice i said i don't know who that is he walked in the store and i always met that that was my spot i was there every day so they all knew me he walked up to the front counter and said do you know about a guy by the name of charles i heard he meets here she's like oh that's mr charles right there go ahead and bring his tea he's waiting for it so he brings it over he's like hey i've been trying to call you and i was like are you that, that was the number? Yeah. I said, are you <laughs> yeah. that 225 number I've been in? No, he said, yes. I said, I'm sorry. I said, I didn't know who you were. He says, well, I'm starting a group home in Baton Rouge, and everyone is telling me that you're the person who needs to help me. I was like, sir, listen, I got an idea for a business. I'm trying to figure out how to leave my job, and now you want to throw this in my lap? I'm good. <laughs> he says, uh, what would it take for you to do it? I said, I don't know. I said, if you write me a check for $30,000 right now and pay my salary for the next six months, I'll do it. So he took out his checkbook and wrote me a check for $30,000. Unbelievable. He just got walked up to you. You never met him, never no. heard of him. <laughs> and he was calling you and you wouldn't answer. Oh, my God. So the first thing I did was call the bank to make sure it wasn't a bad check. <laughs> <laughs> and I asked him if they had six months of my salary in his bank account. And he says, it's good. I said, all right, let's sign it. So I took out a note, uh, a napkin, wrote the contract on a napkin, and we signed it. And that's what gave me the startup capital. That's incredible. So so I'm telling you, part of what your story is, is like a movie script. I mean, <laughs> it really is. It's, I'm hearing some of these things that go, that just doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. it it. When you look back at it, I sometimes I feel like that. But then- Everything that happening in my life now doesn't feel like it's supposed to be happening either. On my one telemed side, we just became the national provider for Edna Better Health. So we went from Unbelievable. we're going from a local company to a national brand as we speak right now. And the crazy thing about it is I don't have a marketing team. Yeah. I don't yeah. market. Yeah. And it's like we're an opportunity now to move in the other states to help more people to the point by in the next eighteen months. We'll have over two two million patients that we'll be serving, and I'm looking at it like, <clears throat> yeah, yeah this is uh, it's real, yeah, you know. And even for the device side, it's like the the mere fact that I invented a medical device. It, it, it's crazy, huh? Yeah. With a high school diploma, yeah, right, yeah. Like, okay, so I've come to the conclusion that nothing is explainable in my life. Yeah. And yeah. if I live in that space, 
that means I'm living in the unpredictable. And as long as I stay in the unpredictable, then I can always accomplish everything I want to accomplish. Okay. Reaching over. <laughs> you, you get another ding. <laughs> that is beautiful. We're, we're definitely going to have to follow up with you in a few months. You, you have a, a huge, huge life ahead of you. Oh, I'm so happy Thank for you. you. I appreciate it. I'm going to cite the book that you mentioned a couple of times mm. in the show notes and, and the deals. But so, you know, you, you, you're going places. I can't wait to hear your uh, business tips. So if you had somebody who was in your situation, let's say he's an 18 year old kid and he's, he doesn't know what he wants to do, but he, you know, he wants to start his own business. What would you tell that person? I, I guess I would tell him the same thing. I, I just spoke to a group of kids in St. Landry Paris through the JAG program last week. And my whole statement to them, my whole uh, presentation, I, I just moment with them, there was three words. Believe, behave, become. So what do I mean? You have something that you believe in so much. You believe in that thing. This is what you want. Once you believe in it, your job now is to behave like you already have it. And you do it over and over again. No matter what happens, no matter what circumstances come in your life, you behave like what you believe has already happened. And then as a result of it, you'll become it. And that's the manifestation. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> so I've asked this next question to every guest that's ever been on the show, and I can't wait to hear what you how you respond. How do you try to leave people different and better just because they met you? I don't want to motivate anybody because I believe motivation is a sin is a emotion that keeps people on point for a certain period of time until that emotion dies off. When I walk away from a person, I want people to be more focused and more fearless. That's the thing, because if you can look at me and if I can do it, then what makes you think you can't do something and do something better? And that's what I want people to see. I want people to look at my life and what is happening in my life allow my life to be the ceiling and their life to be the floor, right? So let my let their floor be my ceiling. Hey Amen. That's yeah. great. And then so being able to share experiences and share things that will keep them from making the same mistakes I did so they can get to that place of where they serve their destination faster than I did. Thanks for tuning in to I Finally Get It. For more information on Charles and what he's got going on, please visit our show notes. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode. If you're an entrepreneur and you have a light bulb moment that would help other entrepreneurs, please reach out to me at jeff at ifinallygetit.com.